What's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Maple and Honey. Alright, a couple things today. I wasn't really expecting this, but I thought it would be a good one to put it together. We got the Yamazaki 12 Japanese single malt whiskey here. And loved by a lot of people. So we'll try this one out. Well, it's a brand new bottle, so we'll open it. And we got the Tokyo Banana dessert here. I don't know if many of you know about Tokyo Bananas, but it's I think it's pretty well known, right? It's one of the like a go-to souvenirs you get for your your family or your friends or whoever if you go to if you go to Japan. It's like a very fluffy uh, pastry that you can't get anywhere else, from what I understand. Um, you could get it here. I think it's it costs like exorbitant amount of money to bring it here. So we'll try it out. We got a couple kinds. Uh, we have three different kinds. We'll try that out. We'll try the whiskey out by itself. We'll share a little bit about the whiskey. We'll try the desserts by itself as well, and um, and then we'll sort of try it together and see see how it tastes together. So let's try the Yamazaki first. Uh, I mean, what can I say about the Yamazaki? People who do enjoy Japanese whiskey, uh, this is sort of the go-to, uh, sort of the one that everyone talks about. The Yamazaki, the Hibikis, the Hakushus. Especially the Yamazaki 12, I think it got like so many awards. So many, you know, uh, awards over the years as one of the um, best Japanese whiskeys, whiskeys out there. So let me open it up. It's you know, uh, again, it's for those who don't know too much about Japanese whiskey, I mean, I don't know that much as well, but I just know the basics. I know they've been around for a while. I mean, I think they've been around ever since the 1800s. There was a couple, couple guys in Japan who went to, to Europe or Scotland and they sort of learned how to do, uh, how to make good whiskey, and they sort of brought it over. And since then, they've been making whiskeys at Japan. But the funny thing is, they, it hasn't been you know, popular around the world ever since before 2000s from my understands. And after 2000, I think whew, it took off. Since then, I know everyone wanted to taste it, wanted to try it. Uh, people couldn't get their hands on it. You still can't get your hands on it. So I think it sort of took off and the Yamazaki 12 is the one that sort of everyone wants that you're sort of is able to get, but, um, but still, you know, relatively expensive, I know. I know there's like a Yamazaki like 18 that is sort of a unicorn. There's like a Hibiki 30, um, Hibiki 20 or something like that. The Hakushu, like, you know, 20 something. But this one is sort of the go-to that everyone could sort of find if you are able to find it and at a attainable price. So we'll try this one out. All right, open it up. A oh, funny thing about this bottle, it's not the traditional, you know, core puff. This is a screw bottle so that's sort of a unique thing about it I don't know if some people say it sort of cheapens the look but I don't think so I mean what does it matter as long as it tastes good whatever is inside is what matters so let's give it a little pour all right oh, I can smell the vanilla so I bought this bottle not too long ago. Um, it's an allocated bottle. You don't see it too often come in. And when, it, when they do, they sell out pretty pretty fast. I think the cheapest one I could find, or people could find, is at Costco. I think they actually carry these at Costco. For 400 bucks, 110 or something like that. And again, it goes by within a flash. I think once it comes out, literally it's gone in that morning. So. It is relatively high up there compared to other whiskeys, but there's a good reason for it. I think people like it because there's a lot of complexities. It's not a very straightforward whiskey. It's a very well-rounded balance, has a lot of characteristics peeking out when you taste it. So we'll try it out and then we'll see where it goes. So, cheers. Right off the bat, it smells like melons. I don't know. Yeah, like a like uh, like a honeydew pears. Little woody notes coming through. Little grassy notes coming through as well. But very gentle. Nothing is nothing is like plucking the nose out, nose hairs out of my nose. Color is pretty golden. Not too much to it. It's not very viscous. But I wasn't expecting it to be anyway. So oh, forgot to say it's a. Uh, 43%, 86 proof, it's not very hot. It's not very strong, 
when it comes to actual actual alcohol content. In my humble opinion, it's a very good entrance whiskey to sort of get into because it's low proof, has a lot of good flavors, it's relatively sweet, and uh, if you could get your hands on it, it's actually you know liked by a lot of people, so you can share it with a lot of people too. So, anyway, let's try it out. Very caramelly, very a little bit of brown sugar in there, almost like a, not really like a bourbon, but very gentle. Bourbons are like thick and like, you know, coats your mouth very well, but this was very light, like a caramel flavor is coming through. Pear, for sure, apples, a little bit of floral notes as well. And then there's a little bit of, not heavy oak, but sweet oak flavor coming through. The, the mouth feel is not, it's not that great. It comes on and then it leaves. And the finish is just mediocre at best as well. Again, it's a pretty light whiskey, right? It's 43%, so it, it's, it's not gonna tax you in your mouth. It's not gonna leave a hole, you know. It's gonna make you remember as it goes down like, you know, barrel proof bourbons or something like that. But it has a little bit of smoke too. Smoke sort of comes in like a, like a sweet oak smoke. It comes in and just sets the bases around it. It sort of engulfs all the flavors. Uh, has the vanilla, the fruits, the florals, the, the little bit of oakiness, all sort of, you know, it sort of puts it all together and holds it as it goes down. It's not, it's not any of those flavors, like all Japanese whiskey, it's like most. All those flavors are not dominant. Those flavors are very in balance of each other. They sort of harmonize sort of together in your mouth. It's one of those whiskeys that it's like, you know, people love it or people don't, eh, don't really like it. It's people who are like, oh, I like the heavy whiskeys with, you know, 65% alcohol and I like the thick and smoke in my mouth and all the wood. It might not be for you, but if you are into a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of the barreliness, a little bit of the, uh, you know, floral naturiness and not too strong on the, on the palate, this might be the one to sort of, sort of try. So, so that's that. Again, the price point is 110, 120 bucks for a bottle if you could find it. And, you know, on the secondary, three, four, five hundred bucks if they have it in stock. So it's kind of ridiculous. Is it worth that much? No, absolutely not. I don't think so. Maybe for hundred bucks, it's stretching it. I think, in my opinion, because you could think of so many things I could get for hundred bucks. Uh, not just uh, not just single malt whiskey, but other, you know, let's say bourbons or, you know, blended whiskey or whatever. So hundred bucks-ish, I think it's definitely a good pickup, especially if you have a lot of people over and they want to try stuff. This is a, this is one of the go-to ones. But is it worth going for three, four, five hundred dollars? No way, no way. Just wait on it. It'll come, if you're lucky hard enough, one, one of these days it'll come through with a, with a bottle for MSRP, so. We'll try the Tokyo Banana. So this is, uh, this is, uh, I thought I, I got this yesterday. I thought I'd sort of do it as soon as I can because I got little kids in the house sort of who, who love this. And if I leave it off for more than a day, they'll just devour it all. So I got this from uh, my sister who recently came back from, from Japan and uh, got, a, got well, I was lucky enough to get uh, a couple, couple boxes from, from her. It's good, I, I love it. My kids love it, so we would like to try it. So I thought I'd give it a shot. It comes in different kind of, so they have the standard Tokyo banana. Uh, I'll open up in a second. And they also, uh, I also have the Tokyo banana pie, which is sort of like an elephant ear Tokyo banana uh, pastry. And then I also have the Kit Kat uh, Tokyo banana flavor. So we'll try it all that out. Okay, so we'll open this guy up, brand new box. So this one came in this yellow wrapping as well. Like a good, it's ready to uh, give as a gift. So they sell it like this at the convenience store or not convenience stores, um, like airports or, or souvenir stores in Japan. So see the, the packaging is about the same. So here we go. Let's open it up. It's very nicely packaged, very presentable. Here's one of them. So yeah, again, it's shaped like a little banana. It's a very soft, spongy dessert and inside has a banana filling. So we'll try it out. It's like a sponge cake with the banana cream filling. 
Here's the cookie banana eleven years. I mean, that's the best way to describe it is like elephant ears. But it has a banana taste, very buttery. Well, I'm sure the elephant ears are buttery too, but this is really, and crispy. Very like. Okay, let's try it with the whiskey. Cheers. By itself, it's almost a little too sweet, but with the whiskey, it tones down that sweetness. The crunchiness is still there, well, until you sort of swirl it in your mouth. But the main thing is, when you eat this by itself, the sweetness and the bananainess is, is sort of very dominant, but when you eat this together with the whiskey, the sweetness, it gets toned down a little bit, and then the banana t taste itself changes. It's sort of, sort of like an overripe banana, those, those the polka dotty one, it tastes sort of like that. If you like overripe bananas, that might be it. Might be one to try out. Let's try it with this one now. <clears throat> it tastes like it takes the dessert and makes it into a banana liquor. Like a polka dot banana that's sort of fermented and then made it into a liquor. If you like that stuff, it's good. We'll try the kick kind of. I opened this one already. So that's why it's open, but it comes in individual packs inside, so. Well, this one's pretty good. I think the difference is this one's a chocolate. So for me, I like chocolate with like other whiskeys too, like chocolate and bourbon. So I think chocolate and this one goes pretty well. It makes the chocolate more richer and thicker. A little bit of the bitterness of the chocolate gets gets accentuated with, with, with the whiskey and then um, brings it out. The flavor, all the flavor sort of gets accentuated. I like that. Again, this one doesn't really have heat to it. it it's not that, it's not like 50 or 60% alcohol. So it's, it doesn't have that punch when you when you, when you you drink it. So when you when you have it with the dessert, I think it's sort of very complimentary. It doesn't, the alcohol doesn't overwhelm everything that's in your mouth. It sort of it brings it out a little more. Let you taste it a little more. So, oh, funny thing about Japanese whiskey, I wanted to mention before even, uh, we started was that in Japan, I didn't know about this too, but people actually drink their whiskey with equal amounts of hot water, like hot water, not like you know, lukewarm water, a little bit of warm water, but hot water. I haven't tried that, but I'm, I'm probably that's a good idea to try it at another time. The hotness of it, the warmth of it, it brings out all different kinds of characteristics in the, in the whiskey and makes it more more enjoyable to drink. It sort of tones down the the, the alcohol-like content of it so you can drink it for a prolonged period of time. So maybe we'll try that next time. That's a good idea to sort of do. What would Steve uh, grade this uh, Yamasaki 12? I'm a bourbon drinker, so I love bourbons. I like, you know, a little bit higher on the on the alcoholic content. I like the mouthfeel of a, of a whiskey that has a a higher alcoholic content. It coats your mouth longer and then has a more medium and fuller body than a lower proof one and sort of hangs on to all of that flavor as it goes and I really enjoy that. So just from that perspective, you know, I'm not a huge fan of most Japanese whiskeys, but I mean, I do appreciate it. It has so many other flavors in here. There's floral notes, has a woody note in there has caramel and sugary note, has fruity notes, has passion fruity sort of like a, like a honeydew notes in there, I remember. You know, all kinds of, you know, all these flavors, none of them overwhelming each other. And which, which is such a delicate and finesse way of making a whiskey. And I think that's why so many people love it. It's just such a good meld, good harmony of all the flavors without, you know, kicking your butt when, it, when you drink it, so. I understand and I appreciate that. And I do like it once in a while when I drink it. And you know, sometimes I feel like a Japanese whiskey and I pop open this bottle or some of the ones that I have in the back and it's always a good time. So I would definitely recommend it for hundred bucks. I think it's worth a pickup, 150, 100, 100, 150. If you're hitting, if you're going above that, maybe two, 300, four, 500. I, 
I mean, it's it's up to you, but I don't I wouldn't suggest you go for that high for this whiskey. For this one, for a Tokyo banana, if you know of, if you never tried it, if you like sweets, if you like pastry, you like banana, I think it's definitely worth it. It's really, it's really soft and very, really, you know, gooey and all that banana I taste in the in the middle. Um, it's really good. All three of them. If you're a Kit Kat lover or a collector or whatever, it's you know, it's delicious. Personally, I like these two a lot. This one by itself, not with the whiskey, but this elephant ear looking pie thing, it was delicious with this. So yeah, that's my thought on these two. If you get a chance to ever to pick up either of these, please do so. Hope you enjoy it as much as I, I did. So that's all I have for you today. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for me. That would help the channel a lot. You know, if you have any questions, if you have any whiskeys or or pairing or food that you want me to, uh, you want to see me try it out, let me know. I'll definitely take a look at it and then respond if I can too. So appreciate it. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for everybody uh, and have a good one and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.